Hello class. I'm going to talk about some of the more common cardiac medications that you will find. Now nitroglycerin you have all heard of. Nitroglycerin you have demonstrated use in patients with angina and you've used that nitroglycerin to dilate the coronary arteries to bring more blood flow to the myocardium. That's not the only use for nitroglycerin because nitroglycerin can also be used for patients in heart failure. We use nitroglycerin to decrease preload, that is the pressure coming into the right side of the heart. Nitroglycerin opens and dilates up the venous system, decreasing pressure coming back into the heart. Nitroglycerin can be given sublingual, IV, uh, transdermal, translingual spray. When you give nitroglycerin, you have to look for hypotension, rebound tachycardia, dizziness, and the most common side effect is headache. This next class of meds are your antihypertensive meds. ACE inhibitors are very, very important drugs, especially in heart failure. ACE inhibitors are recommended, number one, for heart failure. Patients in heart failure benefit from ACE inhibitors by having positive remodeling of the left ventricle, in effect, reversing heart failure. The major side effect of ACE inhibitors are cough, a dry cough. If you have a dry cough, then you'll have to change from an ACE inhibitor. Now, with ACE inhibitors, you have to watch for hyperkalemia. That's increased potassium, and you have to watch for increase, worsening renal function or increase creatinine. Those would be some contraindications to the use of ACE inhibitors. The next class of drugs are beta blockers. Beta blockers are good because they're both an anti-anginal drug. They work by lowering blood pressure and heart rate. These drugs can cause things like headache, hypotension, bradycardia, side effects. The major issue with beta blockers is you have to keep in mind patients who are smokers or COPD, because it's a beta-2 agonist, it can cause constriction of the bronchial and worsen respiratory uh, status. Calcium antagonists, such as cardizem, nifedipine, and verapamil are good drugs for antianginal as well. They are not very popular in heart failure because they can actually worsen lower edema lower extremity edema. So these drugs would not be used in patients with heart failure. However, they're very good drugs for patients with atrial fibrillation with high heart rate where you need control of the heart rate. So they work by lowering the blood pressure and also by lowering heart rate. Amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic. It's become very popular. It's on ambulances. It's on ca crash carts. They work very well in treatment of ventricular fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia, and any kind of cardiac. Mostly, they also are used in atrial fibrillation, although there are some newer therapies that are coming out for atrial fibrillation. You have to be very careful with this drug because it interacts with everything. It interacts with Coumadin. It interacts with the sunlight. It interacts with antibiotics. So most any drug that, it, that there's a in cross-interaction, amiodarone will be one of them. The side effects include bradycardia, hypotension, visual problems. It can also cause pulmonary problems, so you have to keep that in mind. These are drugs that we use usually in emergencies, and you've learned about epinephrine for, in the use of anaphylactic. Uh, we use epinephrine in ACLS. When we run uh, code, we, epinephrine is one of the first drugs we give to increase blood flow to the heart, brain, and lungs. Atropine is similar to epinephrine, but it only works to increase heart rate. So if a patient is bradycardia, have bradycardia, you would give them atropine. Dopamine works just on blood pressure. It's an IV infusion and you, you will titrate dopamine up to get a desired blood pressure. Keep in mind dopamine is not 
recommended for patient in hypovolemic shock because you don't have any volume. So in hypovolemic shock, you would not give dopamine, but you would replace the fluids. Then isoproteranol is one of those drugs that are used in the ICU to treat hypotension. Uh, it's given as an intravenous infusion. These drugs, you have to keep in mind, pull blood away from the lower extremities. So ischemia, cyanosis, gangrene is one of those problems when you use these type of drugs. Adrenergic blocking drugs are very effective drugs that treat in blood pressure. However, they're not first-line therapy, and the reasons are based on their side effects. Some of these drugs include Cardura, Clonidine, and Aldament. The major side effect is orthostatic hypotension, and orthostatic hypotension is a major problem in the elderly where they are prone to falls. You can also have sexual dysfunction, palpitations, etc. So keep in mind these drugs are very good for lowering blood pressure, but they are not first-line drugs and they do have side effects that are can be a problem. Aldactone has become very popular now because aldactone is an indication for heart failure. It's a diuretic. It's a different from the other diuretics in that it holds on to potassium. So when you have a patient on aldactone, the major side effect will be hyperkalemia. You must monitor electrolytes for patients on aldactone. The other diuretics, uh, hydrochlorothiazide and Lasix, they, can, they are given to treat blood pressure or to treat fluid, um, fluid overload. Lasix is a much more powerful diuretic than hydrochlorothiazide. And mannitol is one of those drugs that um, is much more powerful than Lasix. Mannitol can cause, um, it's used for increased intracranial pressure and increased intraocular pressure. You must watch for fluid electrolyte imbalance. And patients on this drug is usually in an ICU and monitored very closely. These are very powerful drugs and they need, patient needs to be in the ICU.